Welcome to Macroaggressions. I'm your host, Charlie Robinson. If you are watching us on Iconic, Rockfin, Odyssey, YouTube, or now band.video, oh no, look out, or you're listening wherever podcasts are served. Thank you so much. Well, I'm excited about this episode for a variety of reasons, but uh, Conspiracy Kyle is back with us. He has a great podcast called A Conspiracy in the Force. Kyle, good to see you again. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful, Charlie. Thank you so much for having me. Well, the reason why you're back, besides your shining face, of course, is because <laughs> you've written a book. And um, I got a little, I, I must confess, I got a little bit of a sneak peek on this book because you were nice enough to ask me to write the foreword to the book, which I, I enthusiastically did because of my love of Star Wars, my interest in the sorts of topics that we get into on, on, on my show, uh, my great deal of respect for you, for what you're doing, your ability to put these things together in a way that no one else is doing. I find it uh, amazing. And I'm so, and you said, I was thinking of, thinking of writing a book. And I was like, you definitely need to write a book on this because it's so, it's perfect for the book. The book's out. Let's talk yes. about it. What's going on? Yes. Tell us about the book. So the book's out and I'll put it up on the screen for anybody that's watching on video. So it's called Intergalactic Totalitarianism. It sounds like a college course. You know, maybe right. I should, maybe I should go teach it. But um, the subtext is authoritarian tactics and traits in a galaxy far, far away in a galaxy not so far away. And the, the, um, Charlie, thank you so much for writing the forward. Anybody, everybody go, go check it out. There is a, I think there is a preview up there on Amazon. If you want to go, go check out part of that forward and, and some of the introduction. And the, um, link, and then, the link will be in the description for yes. anyone. You don't, you, if you want to go to Amazon and you can type in conspiracy Kyle and find it, but I'm going to also put the link in the description in case you forget, or you just want to have an easy access to it. So all that stuff will be down, down below for people. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And, and I'll tell you what, I really love the guy that did the cover art for this. And, and Charlie, I, I showed you a few kind of renderings of things I was looking for, yeah. but I went with something pretty simple. It's, it's the death star destroying earth. And I think that's all you, that's all I really needed to say, because the, the whole point of the book and really what it boils down to is, is things we've talked about before things I've talked about with, with Sam on Tim Foyle and a lot of other shows is that things you see in star Wars about how totalitarian governments act is, is, almost 100% how they act in our world. Right. And things that have happened in history, things that are happening now, look at this movie, look at other sci-fi movies that have totalitarian governments, you see a lot of the same beats. And I think it's just, what I wanted to do was kind of line those things up to just get everybody to think like, listen, we need to learn from history, you know, history rhyme. You know, they, people say, you know, history re repeats, but George Lucas always said, you know, like poetry, history rhymes, you know, and you see similar things happening time and time again. So. I kind of wanted to go through the book and in detail some of that that stuff that we had we had talked about in the past. So yeah, it's such a great. I mean, since the first time I connected with you, I've just been overly enthusiastic about this idea because I didn't ever really see it until it. To me, it's the it's the it's the old the painting with all the dots where you can't see the elephant until you squint and then you see the elephant, and then you can always see the elephant from that mm -hmm. moment on. When it came to Star Wars movies, I loved them. Obviously, I love the science fiction component as a kid, but then you get older and you get a different version of it. You get, the, you get this sort of thing that Pixar is really great at, which is having two storylines running simultaneously, one that's kind of on a lower level for the kids, one that's on a higher level uh, for the adults. And they'll laugh at, you know, there'll be a joke and it'll be the punchline and the kids are laughing for one reason, the adults are laughing for another reason. And that's a real talent. And I didn't ever realize how smart George Lucas was with his writings. And, and ultimately he didn't, I mean, he directed the first one, but, but stepped out, but he was always involved in this and having this ability to do two things at once, entertain people with a science fiction movie, which is visually stimulating and all those things, while also uh, talking about a, a very deep message in there and, what George Lucas did through through these movies was embed, as you know, these old storylines, the the Roman storylines in Greek mythology, and all of these old things, the hero's journey and in the Odyssey, and you know, the these these concepts and these stories that are ancient, and yet 
they're not so old that they don't apply to us. Um, right. It You can find a way to make it apply to us, whether it's currently here or whether it's a galaxy far, far away. Uh, we see this sort of pattern, these this overlap. And I love... I just love that we're able to uh, I'm able to transition now from being yeah. a kid watching the movie and saying, isn't this cool? They've got TIE fighters and X-Wings and all that to, to saying, oh, the Trade Federation guys, I know who they are. Wait a second. Hang on a second. There's a there's a political a p- political science theme running through this as well. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about well, actually first. Let's start, start with this because you did something in this book that I think is remarkable. Uh, we've got the Hegelian dialectic, right? And David, the problem reaction solution. And David Icke has done a lot of work with that. He's 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 kind of re- renamed some of that totalitarian tiptoe and things like that. You took it to another level with the three C's in this, the Hegelian dialectic, but you put your own little spin on that. Well, what are the three C's? Sure. So, yeah, so I wanted to kind of take that problem, reaction, solution and make those words a little bit more demonstrative, right? Because problem, reaction, solution, we, we all know that we talk about that all the time. And it's a very, it's a very good way to, to talk about how this control mechanism system works. But, you know, as I was watching some of these, the Star Wars prequel movies specifically, everything that every time something really bad was happening in the, in the universe, people would say, this is a crisis. This is a crisis. They wouldn't say it's a problem. I'm like, you know what? So what if I just kind of changed the problem reaction solution to three other things? So, so what I changed it to for, for this, and, and it specifically works in these Star Wars prequel movies, you see this kind of template happen over and over again, is you have crisis, you have a crisis, you have consent given by the people, and then you have control. You know, and, and you know this, Charlie, it always ends up in control for, right. <laughs> for, for those people in power, for those totalitarians. So, you know, a, a crisis happens, right? You know, like, like you said, this trade federation it has a huge trade dispute they they blockade a planet they invade a planet it's a it's a crisis um you know and, and it happens in the next movie there's a, a civil war brewing that's a crisis you know just in transition to our world right 9 11 that's a crisis the COVID stuff that's a crisis world war ii that's a crisis all these things are a, a catalyst to launch these next two steps and just like in problem reaction solution the crisis consent and control they always want control i mean that's that's obvious, and you know, Charlie and you and everybody listening knows that. They always want control, but they have to create that crisis. And I think that the middle piece of consent um, is very important, especially right now with yeah. what's happening with, with, the medical, with the medical bullshit. Everybody has given consent. It, it's not just a reaction. It's not just saying, oh, my God, something needs to happen. It's people literally saying, here, take my rights away. Yeah. I don't need them. I don't want them. Government, you know what is best. Do, do with my rights as you will, and, and then we're going to have peace and security and all this shit, and it never ends up that way. So I kind of tried to, to reframe it in that context, and you can, you can frame that in our world as well. The, that's, the, that's an important part, is, that, is the differentiation you made with consent as opposed to just reaction, because a reaction could be, oh, wow, and then nothing behind it, whereas consent is, mm-hmm. oh, wow, here, let me give you the authority to do whatever you need to do during, after this crisis, we, we, we get to a point in, um, and you folk mostly focused on the, on the prequels, right? Yeah. So, um, and, and it's not to say that, that, that this sort of formula doesn't happen in, in the star Wars, uh, empire strikes back return of the Jedi, uh, three pack or the, or the last three pack as well. But but you you focused on the on the early components of this and um, and what we saw in there was a was a a transformation of one of the characters from senator to chancellor to emperor. <laughs> yeah, and, right. And you start to hear. I mean, when you hear when you hear terms like chancellor. I go to Reich Chancellor, Reich Chancellor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I go yep. straight to Nazi Germany, and um, and senators. Of course, senators have been around. That's a, a Roman term. We've we've embraced that here in America. We we see this um, the transition from a from a humble senator to a, 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 a well. I guess he became a, a chancellor against his own will, a temporary right. chancellor. He's still <laughs> right. in. 
And then we watched what happens as that morphs into becoming an emperor. So they're laying out in these prequel movies what happens when you allow power to go unchecked to the wrong type of person or the wrong personality traits. Let's talk about that that transformation, the senator, chancellor, emperor um, movement. That's a fascinating one. Uh, is it? Is there any truth to the rumor that you um, modeled this after Mitch McConnell? Uh, abs- absolutely. You know, I as I was writing this book, my computer background was just all kind a, a collage of of Mitch McConnell. I couldn't I couldn't get enough of him. You know, he was he was invading my dreams. You know, I I almost just ended up writing a book about him and scrapping this whole idea. But <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah yeah you're right. I mean, and honestly, even in this book, as, as I look through it. Um, I make very, very few references to even Darth Vader or um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Like your main characters of the story. Because like you mentioned, it is such a layered story that there's the battles, there's the Jedi, there's the personal stuff with Anakin. Anakin, you know, Anakin also transitioned to, to a different yeah. person, to Darth Vader. But really, he was all, and we all love Darth Vader. He's one of the greatest villains of all time. I would say maybe the best. But he's still just a pawn, right? He's basically a useful idiot at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, Palpatine, to me, that's a more of a compelling story because if it weren't for him, you know, nothing would have nothing would have changed. He's the, he's the puppet. He's basically, in my opinion, he's like a one person deep state. He's like a one person Illuminati. Like, you, you know, in our world, there's this whole group of people that make sure everything happens. In, in this case, it was just him. It was just him in the dark side. We're, we're able to, to do all this stuff. So but you notice throughout this entire thing, like like you said, um, he mentions a few times like. I'm just doing this at at the will for the will of the people. They they chose me. They wanted me to do this. You know, in the in the in the middle movie, they they grant him emergency powers. You know, we heard that before. Once again, against his will, he's and he and then he he plainly says and and when you watch the movie, you crack up when you hear this. He's he he literally says, you know, I promise I will give these powers up when the crisis is over. Yeah, and have, yeah, yeah. You have my word on that. Yeah, and he yeah he looks very <laughs> sincere, and you know. Yes. You just look at that and you go, he's such a politician. He's, you yeah. just know if you know anything. I mean, if you're a kid watching it, maybe you don't know any, any better. But if you're an adult watching it, you know he's never giving those powers back. Never. And, and he's never giving them up for, for one of two reasons. For, for one, he will make that current crisis go on or he will create a new crisis. And that's why we talk about this crisis consent control because he keeps doing this. They mention it. Um, I read the, the novelizations of these, of these movies to go on, which I, I encourage anybody if they, if they like Star Wars but don't really like the prequel movies, I, I would, I would re- encourage people to go read the novelizations of those because it gives a lot more color and background to a lot of the political stuff that, that goes on. Um, but he um, kind, of, kind of forgot where I was going with that. That's right. He, he, he basically, um, and even the, I would say even the Jedi, you know, one of the, one of the important things that, that I talk about in the book is that not only are totalitarian regimes started by terrible people, but they also are allowed to exist because people do nothing to stop it. Right. You know, you have the Jedi, you have Yoda, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Mace Windu, all these really powerful people who are supposed to be like these monk-like heroes, meditating, studying, understanding what's really going on, but they were as manipulated as as anyone else. And at the end of the day, they were, all but two of them were dead. And the ones that survived spent, spent 20 years in exile basically scratching their heads like what, what, what the hell went wrong like why did we not why did we not see this happening so it's 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 one of the points of the book is that you have to understand like like you mentioned about david like the totalitarian tiptoe you have to understand when you start hearing politicians saying these things like we're just doing this to keep you safe listen this is for your own good when you hear that stuff immediately run the other direction right because it is never for it is never for your benefit even if you think it is so even even the people playing along with everything that's happening, especially right now, I think they're going to have a rude awakening when, you know, if, 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 you know, unfortunately, if the world does have, have a humongous changeover of a, you know, one world government, what have you, the people that have been playing along with this are going to be treated just like the people who were fighting against it. Great and, that's an, that, and that's another very sad thing about it as well, is that there's a side of people who know something bad is happening and don't do anything and people who go along with it thinking that it's the right thing. In the end, both of those groups of people end up getting wiped out. And it, it, you see it in these movies, you see it in, in our world, especially, and you had brought this up to me before about you know the brown shirts, right? Right. 
Yeah. They, yeah the, the, in World War II, they 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 thought they were they thought they had picked the side. They'd pick Hitler's side and they because they recognized this was where the power was flowing and they did the bidding of the early administration and were rewarded by being slaughtered by the SS yeah. and the right. and without ever seeing it coming. And the reason why they didn't see it coming was they 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 didn't realize the game. They didn't yeah. know the game. And Lucas and the writers, the people that are involved in the making of this Star Wars universe, they clearly know the game. They understand how it's played. Um, there's that scene where, where um, they grant the emergency powers to to uh, Palpatine, and he and and. and um, there's that great line that she says, which is, so this is how democracy dies to thunderous applause. And it, it, it strikes me as kind of where we are right now, in a sense. Um, you see all the, or at least the summer of 2020, you would see all the people out there banging pots and pans on their balconies for it. Clap for NHS at eight o'clock in the UK or in Europe and everything. People out there, so it's like, Oh, so this is how totalitarian totalitarianism is formed to thunderous applause by by the dumbed down masses that think they're on the right side. They think they're helping. They want it. They're probably good people. They are good people. They want the, what's best, but they're being manipulated. And, and we see that this manipulation, it's not limited to uh, it's not just movies. <laughs> it happens in real life. And I'm curious about um I'm just I'm just curious about what else you you found in the way of some sort of themes with the Star Wars world that matched up with what we've been going through with the COVID one. One of the things that you talked about is the language surrounding it. Um, there's was there more than just language? I mean, was it it had to have been some some sort of actions or decrees or temporary measures or it's all for your safety or something? It seemed. It seemed it seemed like there was a bit of overlap between the things that uh, the emperor would say and things that Emperor Fauci said. Yeah, and and I think you even and you don't really uh, see a lot of this in the movies, but like I said, in in the novels, it, it provides a lot more context. You know, as you get into the third movie, Revenge of the Sith, there's been this three four year war going on, right? So this war has been happening in the galaxy, back and forth, and, and Palpatine's manipulating both sides. It was never meant to 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 end. You know, just like just like what's going on right now, it maybe it's never meant to end. It's just meant to uh, disorient and disable everything that's going on. And what you find out is happening is that they have this thing called the hollow net. So it's just like basically like our TV, right? Our mm -hmm. our news channels, etc. And this is very interesting. They they pump messages out to the public, stating that the republic, who's like the the you know the government of the time, the republic is losing the war. They continue to tell the people that the Republic is losing the war to the separatists, but that's that's not the case. At any point, Palpatine can 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 wave his wand and and stop the war. He can stop the droid army on the other side and just end it because he he controls that side too. But the, but but people are are put in a a place of fear, right? They're put in a place place of fear of uncertainty. They're willing to do whatever is is needed needed to be done. There's even like this capital city is locked. Down. it's physically locked down people are not allowed to go anywhere i mean i'm like i'm like i'm like come on is this is this from 2020 this <laughs> is planet we on <laughs> yeah is this 2005 and this is crazy but um so so you see all that stuff happening and then you know once this war kind of miraculously ends then then palpatine decrees and hey guess what well that that's over but guess what now the jedi are the enemies and you know people are, are accustomed to this lifestyle of war and war and war and now it's switched from this um, separatist army to being the bad guys to, to the Jedi being the armies. So you can kind of think, now that we're talking about this, you can kind of think about that as all these different new, this is the new variant. Oh, no, th th that doesn't matter anymore. No, this is the new, this is the new thing we need to worry about. No, no, that's ISIS not a- ISIS-K. ISIS-K, ISIS -K, right? It's like, right. no, you can't wear a cloth mask anymore. That Obviously, that. why would you be wearing that, you freaking idiot? Right. We wear this. So the, he continues to keep changing the game. But because people are accustomed to the game, they keep playing along and they cheer on. Unfortunately, they cheer on the slaughter of the Jedi at the end of that movie because they've been accustomed and brainwashed to what they've been fed this whole time. Yeah. 
we see that a lot here with, with our current situation. You, we get promised one thing and delivered something totally different. And uh, the people continue to go along with it. We, we see the boogeyman change. Um, in America, from September 11th, 2001 on, they, they quite rightly calculated that America needs a good boogeyman in order to manipulate the people to get in line to do things that would rightly be against their their own best interests like giving up their rights in the patriot act or going and invading countries that had nothing to do with you and things like that so they've found that a boogeyman works but there's only there's only so long you can use that one where it, it's got to come to an end it's got to change you've got to keep the fear fresh people can normalize people are adaptable they can mm -hmm. get used to all kinds of crazy things like bombs falling on them for years and years and years they can normalize that so you've always got to have that new invisible enemy so so it's funny that you mentioned that because it you know you've got this in the in the the books and movies you've got this this dro uh, droid army clone army um you know battling and yet it's being manipulated by both sides and like you said once one si once that war ends then it's the jedi are now the problem so it's like it's like once terrorism isn't the big thing in america anymore it's the new invisible enemy it's a virus that's around the corner i.e the jedi that you we have to worry about. they're coming to get you they might be here you've got to be suspicious of them but i'll tell you one thing we need we're going to need a little bit more um we're going to need you to give up your rights we're going to need you to to get in line we're going to need you to allow your planet to be mined for some substance or whatever because if you don't then we're all going to get invaded and die so it, it's it's a it's a tactic that's um you know i mean it's quite it's quite devious it's quite brilliant in a, in a in a horrible megalomaniacal sort of way but but the idea of somebody owning both sides of the fight yeah and and maintaining the fight because it's never meant it's not meant to end it's meant to be continuous <laughs> and yes using that the stress of that to wear down your enemy wear down your people wear down their will uh mm -hmm. drain them of their resources you have to be a real devious piece of shit to think like this yeah yeah and and his one of his i think his main purposes is what we talked about a little bit earlier is wearing down the jedi right because like yeah. the jedi the jedi in my opinion um, the Jedi, I, I can always consider them as like an intermediary between the people and like the government, right? They're basically like, they're basically your, your, your firepower, you know, they're the ones protecting the people. So if you can get rid of that layer, you can inflict anything you want on these people. So I, I make, I make a few allusions in the book to the, to the, like a gun control type mechanism to try to get rid of these Jedi, because if you can get rid of them, if you kind of find a way to demonize, demonize that boom, then you can, you can do whatever you want, inflict any, any number of horrors. And, you know, the interesting part is that, and this is something I didn't pick up on until maybe a few years ago, um, as far as from a symbolic per perspective, when you watch these movies, um, and, and I, I didn't believe it until I watched it, as you watch these three prequel movies, if you watch the skyline of the main planet of, of the, the capital city of Coruscant, it slowly gets more and more cloudy and more and more dark as the movies go along. So, he wow. even like that's something that like I had no idea until I watched like a little video of him. Like I'm like, holy shit, that is very important. So that is very symbolic of of cloud clouds, right? The clouds, uncertainty, the like the fog of war. You know, like when you talk about think hear about soldiers in, in battle have no idea which way is left, which way is right. That's exactly what's going on right now. We're in a fog of you know an information war. That's that's no that's no different. And, and so many people have no idea where to go, what to turn to, what's right, what's wrong, what should they do, should they go here, should they, should they stay at home? You know, there, so there's th all of that fog and uncertainty is just um, a, a, ripe, a ripe harvest for the people that want to take over more and more power. Yeah, and that's such a great catch to, to notice the, the, the clouds and the sky changing. There's, you know, I wonder with the, the the director. I know that Hemingway used to do that in his books. I took a Hemingway class in high school, and um, we would read all his books. And and it, it was there were all these little subtle things that you could that that meant that looked like one thing but meant something else. You know, rough seas or cloudy things. You think, oh, it's bad for the sea. Well, it's it's really it's about 
something going on in their head that's cloudy. So I love it when you catch that, when you, when you catch the directors putting in some, some symbols that are maybe subconsciously connecting with the audience in, in a way like, Hey, you know, the picture seems a little darker, a little bit more ominous. The skyline seems a little bit more ominous because the times are a little bit more ominous these days. And, um, I get the feeling like we're being stage managed in, in the COVID thing as well, where we get, we get cloudy days and cloudy days, and then there'll be a ray of sunshine. And then it goes back to cloudy days. And they, they like, there's, they're, they're, they're messing with us uh, the way a director, not, not mess, but <laughs> subtly uh, putting yeah. little, little, little things in there. I love that you, um, I love, you know, the authoritarian authoritarianism is like the main theme of your of the book right it's sort of like it runs through this but the cool. the traits of authoritarians that you see in these people yeah. um and not all of them have all not all of the characters have all of the traits but you see them running through a lot of these characters man it 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 makes me feel like lucas or whoever you know the the directors of the the prequels and everything it may it makes me think that like they would probably never admit to this but during the casting process they were probably like they probably had a guy in mind and they're like i'm, I'm looking for a character that looks like this asshole this this guy i'm looking for a character that looks just like mitch mcconnell <laughs> you know i don't know why i'm picking on mitch mcconnell today <laughs> you know and some some guy's gonna walk in look enough like him and go that the fucking look on that guy's face i just don't like so i wonder about in these 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 movies with these authoritarians man i wonder if they they cast these characters or if they wrote these storylines based on on actual people that they i mean obviously there, there's yeah. there's hitler references and stalin running through all of like this this uh, especially like like star wars or anything like that when you see him like that idea but like I wonder who did. Did you ever pick up or notice that there are any of these characters you ever got the feeling they were like based off of someone that we would recognize? Yeah, I, I would say you know um, a big influence, a big direct influence for for Lucas was you know of course World War II, of course Vietnam, but I think also like the the Nixon administration. You know, talk about someone who got up on the podium and just lied their ass off. I mean, look at Palpatine in that kind of context. That was kind of right in the era where, you know, Lucas was writing some of this stuff and, and thinking of the ideas for like the prequels yeah. and things. So that was one administration that I know that he had a very, very big, big disdain for. But, but you're right. I mean, like I talk a little bit about some of these traits. Like I think the biggest one that all these assholes have is, is narcissism. They are, they are pure, 100% narcissists. Um, and until you like understand, like in, in this was, it, it was, it's a word I've always known, but I've really never understood what it really means. You know, you hear it thrown out, but then as you look at the components of what it actually means, it makes a lot of sense. And it makes sense why not that we're not that I'm excusing anybody's actions. Everybody's accountable for their own actions, but you understand why people are the way they are. Yeah. And you understand that some people cannot be reasoned with. And some people were, are always going to put themselves on a pedestal. They're going to, they're going to kick you to make themselves feel better. They're going to think that they're the only one that are doing anything about anything. They're going to think that they're the hero, but they're the villain the whole time. And that's, you know, that's Palpatine to, to a T. Um, and just and like, like you said, Fauci, anybody else in our world, just look at all of these people. They are all extreme narcissists. They, they use exploitation. They use uh, manipulation. All, all of these things they use to empower themselves, beat down people, and have an inflated sense of, of, of who they are. And, and the thing that drives them crazy is these conversations that we're having here. They can't understand why people like us who are, who are talking about this stuff, who are listening to these kind of conversations, don't, don't, don't also put them on a pedestal. That, that drives them absolutely batshit crazy. And that's why you see so much um, of, the, of, the, of the crazy, psychotic, authoritarian tactics that we've been seeing recently. I mean, just look at what um you know trudeau has been yeah. saying and the guy in, in france you know these people who aren't aren't vaccinated are basically not even citizens anymore They're like this and that's like 
just because they're they're not choosing to believe what you're saying, which you're, you're pathological liars. Why would they believe what you're saying? So narcissism, I think, is, is a very key trait that you see in, in, in Palpatine, specifically in Star Wars, in, in every single world yeah. leader. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know what was fascinating to watch was uh, through the course of of the the prequels was the the transformation of anakin skywalker into darth vader of course it's one of the main themes that runs through and it's one of the main storylines that goes through that and what you can what you i mean at its core it's um someone is so desperate to con for control to control the in his case to control that his wife won't die but he's got to have that control and it it make it turns you insane it yeah. turns you into a monster the type of personality that would have to have that control is a type of personality that can't be reasoned with and so once he makes that transition from that little kid who's in the speeder races you know he becomes it becomes a much darker a much darker energy and and it and it all comes down to i mean it comes down to needing that control and since yeah. i wrote a book about control i'm always sort of <laughs> it brings yeah. me back to that and and it shows you know i always think about how m much horror has been unleashed on this world in the name of control yeah. and the the main character darth vader you know the who became this legendary character was made that way because of his desire to control everything right yeah and 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 he um and you see the the irony in, in all of that and you know he, he wanted this control he knew he knew he was more powerful than everybody else he knew it internally and it was and it was true you know they said his his you know his jedi blood cell count was off the charts or whatever right. that 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 shit was um but you know one of the fundamental things was he at, at his core he wanted to help save people from dying you know that, that's yeah. that's the crazy part he he had visions of his mother dying he wasn't able to save her she died he had visions of his wife dying and he's like listen i'm not gonna let that happen again she's gonna live she's gonna have these she's pregnant she's gonna have these kids things are gonna be great so in order to try to, to save that person, he kills all the Jedi, you know? So it's like, to, to, you know, you, you save one thing and kill 500 people. But in the end, he didn't even save her at all. She ended up dying and, and Palpatine told him that, listen, you're the reason she's dead, <laughs> you know? So it's like the, the twisted irony in that is that you just like we talked about the useful idiots is that you go along with this thing because you think you're gonna you got this reward you think they got this reward at the end but he didn't realize that he cannot have this relationship with his wife and this servitude to the dark side they're 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 exclusive things you right. can't have you can't have you can't have your cake and eat it too so yeah. one of those things had to go by the wayside and, and it was the thing that he that he did all those things to to get and maintain there's so many lessons in this there's so many lessons i mean i think that people can be dismissive of science fiction movies and, and or, or they can be like, oh, it's just for geeks and everything. For sure. There's definitely that component of it. I started watching Star Wars movies when the first one came out when I was five. So like imagine being five years old, seeing Star Wars. It broke my head, my brain, right? I, I, I thought it was great. But now you, now I watch it, I see a different version of it and these lessons in there like this, that, that, I mean, what a, what a valuable lesson to, to, you know, the more you try to control, you know, there's even a line in there. The more I tighten my grip, the more star right. systems slip, yes. slip through it, right? You know, yep. it's like the more you try to control something, yeah, the, 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 it just, that's not the way the universe works. And you have yeah. to be aware of that. You wind up becoming yeah. something that you didn't want to be in order to yeah. hold on to something that you right. were never going to be able to hold on to in the first place. A, a, a perfect analogy is if anybody um, has, has seen like the Breaking Bad series, you know, this character, he's, he's dying of cancer and he says, listen, I'm not going to be here forever. I, I'm, I'm a school teacher. I need to find a way to make a shit ton of money so my family isn't going to suffer. So he, he's, a, he's a chemist. He starts making meth and doing this and that. And throughout the whole series, 
that that's all he says. He's like, listen, you know, wife and kids, I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you. In the end, they want nothing to do with them because he's a deranged psychopath, basically. Right. You know, so it's just a very important thing. You know, just think of like, you know, an abusive, in, in people in an abusive relationships, like, oh, I don't want you talk. I don't want you going out of the house. I want you doing this. I don't want you that. Well, that person won't end up wanting to be with you anyways, because your, your, your grip is so, is so tightened. Right. And, and I think, you know, when we talk about that crisis consent control, I talk about this towards the end of the book because I want to end it on, you know, a little bit of hope, you know, right? It's kind of a, right. you know, it's Star Wars, but it's also very dark, you know, showing how this thing, you know, goes to shit. You know, that crisis consent and the control, I will say, when you get into the original movies, I will say that is flipped um, uh, in, the, in the favor of the rebels. And, you know, the, the Empire is the one, you know, in defense now, right? You know, mm -hmm. there's a crisis that they have to deal with that somebody else is inflicting on them. So I, I, I think I always hold out hope of anything in our world that those things can be flipped. You know, they're, they're inflicting these crises on us now, but, you know, I always hold out hope that this is going to be, this could be turned around and the crisis could be flipped on them. And then yeah. their Death Star, you know, gets destroyed. And I think that's one of the, the main uh, points of the, the original Star Wars movies is that, you know, they can, they can have, I think, the, well, I think the Death Star is a perfect analogy for the government overplaying their hand. You, you know, they, right. they, they didn't need to, to flex their muscle and just destroy a planet to piss off one person. You know, they, 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 they made a terrible, terrible decision that um, in, empowered the rest of the um, the rest of the galaxy to say, what the fuck? What are you guys? What are you guys doing? These people didn't do anything to me. You, you just destroyed them on a whim. And then they're like, we're, we're going to band together and take you out. You know, right. so. I think, you know, as much pressure as can be put on these people, they start making mistakes. And I, like I said, I kind of will always hold out hope that, you know, th things could turn around and these people could, could get their comeuppance in our world too. Yeah. And every time the, the empire is displayed in these movies, it's very cold and dark and metallic and gray and mm -hmm. dystopian and yeah. devoid of love and, and, and anything like that. It's um, it's a it's an interest. So they 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 definitely symbolize this empire yeah. as being, um, you know, like like a totalitarian regime that is that is yeah. not allowing expression. Even there's even like a kind of a transhumanist component to it as well, um, where you've got men dressed like robots, you know, with their yeah. with their armor on that um, most people just assumed weren't even real guys in the first place probably all yeah. you know I'm, most people probably thought they were robots to begin yeah. with and you find that it's this weird blending of man with robots and nobody looks very happy and yeah and you see you go well that's the world that these globalist maniacs envision for us that's the fourth industrial revolution that's the world economic forums dream for us we'll be living in these yeah. micro cities and they they want to run you know they want to run this whole whole operation they're they're starting to feel a whole lot like the galactic empire the world economic galactic empire forum yeah, yeah. Right? And, and you know what's really interesting uh, you mentioned a little bit ago about the, the coldness of the empire and you know there's an animated series that came out a few years ago called star wars rebels which talked about the lead up to you know episode four new hope right where these rebel cells are kind of starting to form and, and become what they you see in the movies and there was a really, really great episode. And I didn't love the series, but there was a really great episode where, um, and, and you see this kind of trope happen all the time where, you know, a, a rebel, someone from the rebel side and the empire side, they both crash landed on this planet and they had to work together to kind of right. figure out, you know, a way to get out of it. And, and, they, and they did. And that stuff was kind of corny and whatever, but, but they worked together. And then at the end of the episode, the person from the rebellion went back to his crew and they were high fiving and giving hugs like, Hey, we're glad to see you this and that mm -hmm. the Imperial officer goes back to his starship. Nobody says a word to him. He just goes back and sits in his quarters in, in complete silence. You know, there's, there's no, right. there's no um, happiness or gratitude for anything he's done or people happy to see him. There is just nothing there in, in de devoid of any emotion. And I think, I think a lot of those globalist assholes, they try to make, make make it sound like their lives are so great but I, i'm telling you charlie you probably agree with me their lives probably suck they probably they, they i think they hate themselves which is why they hate us probably yeah i think there's a lot of trauma there 
with these people. I think they're all fucked up. Um, I don't excuse their behavior for that. And I know yeah. you don't either, but, yeah. but, but, but to be fair, I mean, you're, you're looking at trauma-based mind control, yeah. um, g- people that come from bloodline families, people that come from well-connected military families. There's a lot, there's a lot of crazy shit that goes on. We would, we would be doing it a disservice if we pretended like that stuff wasn't a part of this. Now we, we can debate how much of a part it it is, but it's, we're definitely yeah. talking about some broken ass people that are trying to run this planet. And it seems like some of the, the things that we see here in reality um, were, were also borrowed for the movies as well. Like things like psychopaths um, moving up the, up the ladder uh, and <laughs> being attracted to positions of power be that trade federations or uh, jedi councils or wherever we start to see this this magnetism pulling in uh manipulative and psychopathic sociopathic uh, characters which are which are you know if you're making movies and writing books those are the characters you want because they're interesting um yeah. unfortunately we have them in real life running our, our businesses and running our governments and, and, and in charge of our policies. So I'm just, I'm just wondering, I mean, they, I don't know who borrowed it from whom, you know, I mean, it seems like uh, psychopaths in positions of power is just kind of a, a known and accepted thing, even in the galactic empire, <laughs> or even in a galaxy far, yeah. far away. Yeah, I mean, everything that, you know, everything you see on the screen, everything that any director puts, anything that any author puts in a book, you know, they live and breathe in this world that we're in right here, Charlie. And, you know, they, they like, like, like you mentioned earlier, like they see that one asshole like that. That's the guy that I want to portray in the, mo- in, in the movie because that's the kind of psychopath that, that is ruining my life, you know, and that's ruined, ruined countless other, other people's lives. And you can't, you sometimes can't uh, differentiate the two. There, there's such a, there's such a, a blend there uh, of reality in, in science fiction. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I get a little off put when people consider Star Wars to be science fiction, because I, I personally, I don't really, I consider, like you mentioned earlier, I consider it more in the vein of like, you know, Greek, Egyptian, Roman mythology. Yeah. You know, it, it just so happens to take place in space. And, and, you know, that really, you know, and people say like, oh, you, you, if you like Star Wars, you must believe in the space and all this stuff. And it's like, to me, that, that really, anymore, that really has no significance to me. I'm looking at the underlying story. You know, it could take place in, the, in, a, in a desert here. It could take place, you know, down, down the street. You know, there's a, you know, a new Star Wars series that came out where it showed, you know, a band of rebels you know, chasing after this hover train in the desert. I'm like, that's just like, uh, uh, horses fight, going on an old train robbery in the old west you know so right. it's just it, it's it's just putting it in a different in a different way and you know the technology and stuff that's that's kind of cool whatever lightsabers hyperspace all this kind of stuff it, it's it's cool but really t- to me anymore that's really not any any part of the story i mean there's there's an uh, there's an underlying um story that i think we need that that should be focused on and honestly you know i i, I kind of feel like there was a some kind of conspiracy against the, the prequel movies that, that as we've been talking about because you know like like you mentioned we've been talking about like i didn't catch a lot of this stuff you know on first viewings of these films a, a lot of the stuff you hear about the prequels if you just go out into the public and say like hey what do you think of the star wars prequels they'll be like oh jar jar binks he was terrible it was, it was stupid right. The right. acting was terrible the green screens this and that and again i mean they're valid criticisms but i i think that there may have been and there's no way to prove this at all but but there, there may have been some mainstream push to like, listen, we have to give a scapegoat to this movie for people to talk about because Lucas is hitting it too close to the mark here with, with where he's going with these stories. It's too close to things that have happened in the past and what we want to do in the future too. So, right. <laughs> so, so God forbid people start digging into this kind of stuff because it's, and, and, I think, and I think Lucas's saving grace was that to a certain extent, he kind of worked outside the Hollywood system. I mean, he had a lot of big Hollywood friends, but those prequel movies, he financed them all himself. He didn't get any dollars from anybody else. He put millions of dollars up, up to make those, which allowed him to put a lot of that stuff in there that you probably wouldn't have seen if, if it was a 
true, true, true Hollywood production. Now, I'm not saying that Lucas is is immune to a lot of the terrible things that happen in Hollywood and, and you know, those kind of people. He has a lot of friends that have done very terrible, terrible things. You know, I Steven Spielberg, look into his past. He's a he's a, he's a ter- terrible, terrible thing. He's a monster. Yeah. So I'm not going to excuse any, any of that stuff. But I, but I feel like he was able to have a little bit of a leash to, to put more in these stories than Hollywood really would have liked him to. He had his sound studio. He had his uh, Skywalker ranch. He had, he was, he was outside of, out of the system as much as you could be. He could do a lot right. of the, the stuff his on his own. He had licensed, you know, the toy licensing deals made him billions of dollars. And, um, you know, so he was not dependent on them for money. He had, stupid money from yeah yeah so he could he could do whatever he wanted it, it put yeah you know it's an interesting idea about the about that being um sort of the the prequels being downplayed a little bit i mean like yeah he he, he you know i think that's where i learned about the concept of false flags was from george lucas for these movies you know where you you see the idea of governments acting in a way that is uh, where they say they're doing one thing for their people, but they're actually doing something else. And it's such a simple concept, but to a lot of people, they've never even considered that, that their government yeah. might be lying to them, like might not be upfront with them. Like to, yeah. like, cause yeah. they just, they're just good people and they just don't, their brain doesn't go there. But like now all of a sudden they're going, wait a second. So you're saying the government could like tell their people one thing and then do something totally different behind their back. And, and in, you see it in the movies, it's delivered as like entertainment sticks in somebody's brain. And next thing you know, they're like, you know, I bet our government has thought about doing something similar to that. You yeah. Know, you, 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 right? yeah so, ab- so maybe abso- that's what's going on. Ab- absolutely. And um, yeah. And I think, you know, I'm in the, I'm in the vein of, you know, they put, I think there's, they hide more of this truth stuff in the movies than they put in our mainstream news every night. You know, I think you're able to glean more um, about what's really going on when you look at this kind of stuff than, than what CNN is going to tell you. I'll, I'll be, I'll tell you yeah. th- th- that. And like talking about, you know, false flags, one, one of the biggest ones, and, you know, it's kind of, um, you know, as, as we're recording this, it's around the anniversary of, you know, the whole January 6th thing, right? You know, the yeah. worst event in, in human civilization. Yeah. And in, in Revenge of the Sith, you know, prayers. Thoughts and prayers to to the to the the, the millions that died that day. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you see, at the end of the prequel trilogy, the Jedi finally, at the end of the day, they're like, "Oh, you know, I think we, I think, I think the the Emperor is corrupt. I think he's being controlled by the dark side." So they go to confront him, and the Emperor ends up killing them all. And then, but he ends up with these scars on his face after he brutally attacked and murdered all them. But then he goes. <laughs> he go he goes before the senate no no different than aoc crying about how 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 you know she was you know seconds away from death you know and and he goes up and says look and look the the jedi uh, they attacked me i'm deformed deformed and disfigured and all this and then and then in his next breath he's like you know to combat this we just need to t- if we just turn the republic into an empire and kill the jedi everything's going to be okay like we just need to elect one dictator for life and, you know, that will solve all the problems. I mean, look what they did to me. Look what they did to me. This is terrible. And, you know, it, it's just with that provocation there that, you know, it, it turns into a, a dictatorship. Yeah. And, you know, you, 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 see, you see very, very similar shades of, of what happened early, early tw- 21 as far as demonizing people who um, were said to have motives that, that they really didn't. And it was, a, it was kind of a huge a huge, you know, CIA, F- FBI operation. And what you realize is that none of this shit is new. These are like <laughs> old tricks. They're such old tricks they've been written about. They've made movies. They've put these tricks in the movies and all this stuff. People are like, January 6th, man, it was, uh, it, it was crazy. These people walked into a trap. It's like, of course they did. What yeah, the fuck yeah. did you think was going to happen? <laughs> this, you know, or the other side is is also the people that are like oh it was an insurrection and and it was like 9 11 i'm like you are not a serious person if you were trying to make a comparison between this and 9 11 like go fuck yourself this is that's yeah jibber jabber <laughs> you know what I mean? like this was a bunch of larping retards out there on a tour of the capitol building 
They like yeah, fought, they yeah. Could see the cameras. They like went through the stanchions. There was like photographers and everything there. I, I, it looked like they were on a tour. Right. There's a great quote from. Um, I, I hope it was a real. I hope it was a real tweet from from Norm Macdonald. I saw a screenshot of it. He said he, he's like you know he's like he's like God bless these insurrectionists who who really abided by those velvet ropes right. as they were walking through the, through the Capitol. And you right. see the video, and that's what's happening. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> like it's just it's embarrassing because because when when people get all up in arms about that and it's it's a nothing it's like there's nothing really there uh it makes me just it makes it hard for me to take them seriously when they're talking about other stuff that's uh you know like if you think that january 6th was like pearl harbor then i'm i no longer care what your opinion is about just about anything like yeah it's, i don't know that, i don't want to i don't want to know what you, i don't know what you want to think about omicron i'm sure you think it's like the, the black death right I'm right sure right. it's it's so funny it's that uh um it's funny that, like you said, that there's the, there's the part in the Star Wars movies where where it's the media that's telling them, uh, you know, to be, you know, listen, we're we're losing the war, we're losing the war, and what you yeah. realize is that, like, whether that's here on planet Earth or whether that's on, you know, in a galaxy far, far away, if you've got that media component, yes, and you you can use it against the public to get them to believe something that isn't true. They know that there, yes. you know, they understand that is important there. And maybe that's just it, yeah. us exporting it. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but like, you just think about it. It's like, that's a concept that's never going to get old. Whoever has the ability to talk to all the people, whether it's the preacher or the media or the, the town crier or whatever, whoever has the ability to get the most people to hear them, that person becomes an important person to control. <laughs> yeah. Look at, I mean, it's very, it's very 1984, right? I mean, oh, we're in war with East Asia. No, no, no I'm sorry. We've never been at war with them. We're at war with West Asia over here. No, no, no. You don't, don't ever say we're at war with them. If you say that, you're lying. You know, we were never, that has never happened before. These people are the enemies over here. And like you said, if the people that have that mouthpiece, uh, just because the, just because they have that mouthpiece, doesn't mean everything that comes out of their mouth or anything that comes out of their mouth is the truth. Just like they say, like the person in a room or a debate that's the loudest, just because they're the loudest or they use the most big words or or they swear at you more or they're 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 more demonstrative in their in their language, that does not necessarily mean that they're that they're right. And in most cases, they're probably flailing because they're losing the conversation. Right. It's it's it's. I think we all just need to be very cognizant of that when we're when we're talking to people just because somebody has a louder mouthpiece doesn't mean that they're right yeah we're getting um we're getting people they're trying to manipulate us into uh feeling a certain way the uh the the media is doing that and they're capturing some people and then those people get their brains reprogrammed and they start trying to capture you it's why yeah. they it's it's, a, it's been a fascinating uh fascinating to watch the with the vaccine people that are like got two shots and my booster and got covid thank god i got all my shots or it would have been a whole lot worse that yeah. whole lane of people that's a fucking weird group to me man that's yeah like, and, you know, like and i'll tell you what, like you, a cult and you're and i will i will say on the flip side of that I've been here talking to a lot of people recently that I, that I work with, that I know, family, friends that are that are in that same boat. They get they did this, they did that, they did this, and they're like, "Listen, why why am I still doing this?" They're, they're like they're like what? Like I had somebody tell me the other day, like I might as well just just get a mild virus and be over it at this point. Like why do I need to get a six month booster? And I'm like, control. It, it, it's, it's control. Even if even if all this stuff did everything it was supposed to. It's just, it's just all about control. It's all about we're the, we're the hamsters in the wheel. They're watching us. They're, tr they're looking at the numbers. You know, how many people are complying? How many people aren't? It's giant. It's a, like, we all know this. It's a giant science project to them for compliance. <laughs> we're the, we're the rats. Yeah. yeah. Well, where can people find the book? Sure. Um, yeah, Charlie, thank you. I, I appreciate you so much for you, uh, doing the forward to it. I, it, oh, was, it was, was great. I, it was fun. I, you know, I'm such, I'm a star Wars geek. I don't even hide it. 
I love it. I love it. I love it all. I and I love it. that you've, you've made it all more like of a connection for me to, uh, to bring two things that I like, you know, I like, <laughs> I like a good conspiracy and I like these star Wars movies and, uh, and to, to have the realization that they have a lot of, if it was a Venn diagram, there's a lot of overlap between the yeah. two things has been fascinating for me and yeah. your um your podcast the conspiracy in the force is fucking amazing well and, thank you and, and and it's 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 weird you know the the weird thing is that you know it, it's it's a weird you know niche of people that kind of are are into these kind of things i'm talking about because you have on one side uh you know conspiracy people who a lot of them hate Disney. A lot of them hate the Hollywood. So like yeah. some people get turned off to that just because I'm talking about, and on the other side, you have people who are just into star Wars who I'm, I'm telling you what, Charlie, anybody listening, like go, go, go check this out. If, if anybody out there's on Twitter, go to the official star Wars uh, Twitter page, look at any post that they did, go into the likes and just start scrolling through the profiles it is the most woke shit you will, you will ever see. You will see more pronouns. You will see more hashtags. This movement, this movement. None of, none, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's kind of makes me sad that not, none of those people who are into that are really understanding some of the themes of these movies. And they love the yeah. prequels too, but they're not. So, so anyway, so there's a, a contingent of Star Wars people who aren't into the conspiracy stuff. But, but, you know, Charlie, like you, like a lot of people that I've, that I've known and have been talking to over these past few years um, are able to, acknowledge and appreciate both of those things in a similar context so i definitely um uh, appreciate that so so yeah you can find the podcast it's called conspiracy in the force um anywhere you you get your podcasts um on rockfin uh youtube and twitter and instagram at conspiracy underscore kyle and it's conspiracy with a k so i don't get banned <laughs> <laughs> that's good and, strategy. And, and, and the book is on amazon and you Charlie, you said you'll you put it in the in the show notes i'm gonna put it yeah i'll and, put a link link to it in the show notes so people can find it there uh awesome. get and it, i get will it. say too i'm 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 fin oh, sorry about that i'm i'm finishing up the audiobook version uh, of of the of the book as well so um stay tuned to my social media for when that's complete i'm, I'm doing it all myself so it's taking a little bit a little bit of time but i'm hoping to put out a really a really cool product here soon so thank nice. you everybody thank you charlie so much for having me this has been great yeah you're welcome man thanks for coming on this is um i like i always like to geek out with you about this so if you like this episode you can share it with your friends and family um the website is the octopus of global control.com my twitter is at macroaggression and i will talk to you all soon <laughs>